So again, you're welcome back to the channel, if you're new here, I'm Wealth, I'm a third year medical student of the University of Ibadan. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about 15 highly repeated jam topics. But before I go deep into today's topic, I think it is very important for me to explain how jam really sets jam questions. A jam is basically an O-level exam that tests you based on majorly three criteria. The first is your retention of the material, the second is your understanding of the material, and the third is your ability to apply the concept you've learned. And applying the concept is very important because physics is a lot of calculation and, and it does a lot with application. Also, there is a list of topics you expected to know and you can find the list of those topics in the JAM syllabus. So for JAM physics, there are 39 topics that you are expected to know. And something I noticed about each of JAM questions is that they set only a few questions from each topic. So what does this mean? It means that for you to score very high in JAM, you need to have a knowledge of a lot of topics, if not all the 39, at least most of those topics but that doesn't change the fact that there are some topics that are highly repeated these topics are the fundamental of physics and it is impossible to not set questions from this topic and i'm going to be talking about 15 of them but just so we are clear 15 topics may not just be enough for you if you are aiming to score above 80 or 90 in your physics jam you should learn almost all of those topics but if you are maybe pressed on time you feel you cannot cover all of the topics in jam syllabus or you find it very difficult to learn the topics then you should watch this video because i'm going to talk about some topics you should focus on i'll explain a little bit how you can understand the, these topics and how they are related to one another let's get into the video <music> The first one is dimension and unit analysis. This is not a highly repeated topic itself, but knowing how to analyze units and how to analyze formula is going to help you a lot because as you keep studying, you're going to know many formulas. You should know how to combine these formulas together. The next topic is scalar and vector. You should know how to resolve vector. Know triangle law of vector, the parallelogram law of vector, and very, very importantly, you, you have to understand how to resolve vector into different components, like resolving vector into horizontal and vertical component. I can overemphasize how important this is. It is very important because you'll be needing it in different topics like force, motion, and so on. The next five topics I'm going to be talking about, they are simple topics and most of them are SS1 topics. Try to learn them very well because they are quite easy to understand and they are also repeated. First part is work energy and power. You should know basic formula for work energy and power. The next one is elasticity. In elasticity, try to learn how to calculate elastic constant very important how to find original length final length change in length force all of those things learn young modulus young modulus is tensile stress over tensile strain know the formula for stress itself know the formula for strain know the unit of all of those things machine is the next topic which is also very important so in machine, you should learn how to calculate the efficiency of the different kinds of machine. Know how to calculate mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, understand the basic concepts. All these are still fairly simple topics. Now the next one I'm talking about is temperature and measurement. Learn the different apparatus or the different instruments for measuring temperature. And also very importantly, how to convert the temperature from one unit to another. Degrees to Kelvin, Kelvin to degree, Fahrenheit scale to Kelvin scale, Kelvin to Fahrenheit scale. Next one is heat energy. You should learn expansivity, linear expansivity, area expansivity, volume expansivity. You should also learn how it maintain equilibrium. Like if you put a hot ball in water, how the temperature of the bowl and the water eventually gets to the same level and how to calculate the transfer of heat. Also on that heat, you should also learn about heat transfer, conduction, convection and radiation. They are very common questions. Another topic which is not that difficult is the gas law. Lem Boyle's law, Charles' law, general gas equation. If you understand this topic, it is very hard for them to 
for you to see a question you'll not be able to solve. Next topic is motion. Our motion is Baba. Motion is actually in two segments in your textbook. You have it in motion one and motion two. Try to learn motion very well. Learn the equations of motion and how to apply them. And learn motion under gravity. But if you don't understand motion under gravity, there are some key ideas you should know. I just went out but we'll continue so for you to learn motion under gravity right, you should know things like at maximum height the initial velocity is zero so even if you are throwing an object up you know when you throw it up it comes down right momentarily at the maximum height it is zero then the velocity gets highest by the time it is almost getting to the ground you should learn all those things if you learn the formula you don't know those basic principles you're going to find it difficult to answer questions and you should also know when g is negative and when g is positive for example if i'm throwing object up g is negative the speed is going to be decreasing because g is negative it is acting against gravity right but when it is coming down g is positive the velocity is going to be increasing as you go down so when you understand this basic principle of motion you are going to find it quite simple so you should also know motion at angle and motion at a particular angle they are projectile motion The next topic is forces. You should learn the major force like frictional force. You should know the Newton's law of motion and how the formula F equals to MA actually came to be. You should know the impulse and momentum of force, how to use them, and equilibrium of forces too. This is quite a large topic also, but learning it is going to be worth it because questions come out from this topic. Now let's go to another very, very important topic. Don't make the mistake of not learning this topic because it's always come out waves waves is not like one single topic it's quite large actually but in waves you should learn the general properties of wave in general properties of wave you should learn things like the type of wave mechanical and electromagnetic longitudinal and transverse wave and the the principles behind them how they work and why they are different from each other the examples you should also understand things like amplitude frequency wavelength speed of wave and so on now specifically in wave you should also learn sound wave this is another topic that is quite simple to understand so in sound wave you learn theory mostly you should know the principle like what sound wave is the type of type of wave it is which if you've read general properties of wave you already know by now you should also learn how to calculate the speed of wave and echo things on echo and reverberation now light wave is super super important in light wave you should know how to use lens formula mirror formula understand the resilient propagation of light eclipse and formation of shadows and all of those things you should know how for different lens concave lens you should know is it positive focal length negative focal length they might say don't seem from the beginning but they are not that difficult if you if you chill and learn them also in light learn the dispersion of light of white light too for example they will tell you why is this green color looking green it is green because it absorbs all other color of light spectrum and emits only green The next topic which is quite repeated is capacitor. This is also super simple. Understand how to calculate capacitor in series and in parallel. And you should understand how to calculate capacitance using this formula. If you know just these three basic things under capacitance and some theories under it, you're going to be able to solve almost every question on capacitance. Next one is electricity. In electricity, you should know there are two kinds of electricity, static and current electricity. Static electricity is in the SS1 part of physics. Then current electricity, which is quite larger. You should know how to calculate potential difference, electromotive force, how to calculate resistance, ohm's law, how to calculate resistance in series, resistance in parallel, how to calculate electrical energy. They are very, very, very important. Another one is field. So you should also try to learn gravitational field and magnetic field. And lastly, modern physics. So in modern physics, one of the most repeated questions is radioactivity. And radioactivity can also be 
bonus for you if you know it well you also know things like alpha particle beta particle and gamma rays if alpha particle is emitted from a particular radioactive element what will be left all those equations okay as a departing note let me just give you some advice